Good afternoon, my student. Good afternoon once more. Welcome to another chemistry lesson on back titration. And today I'm going to take you through a back titration question sample so that uh, you follow me very closely and very carefully. Is it okay? Welcome. Uh, my student on the board on the board here uh, have written back titration. And the aim of today's experiment is to determine the relative atomic mass of a metal R in a metal carbonate. That is R carbonate. Is it okay? And we are also going, so going to look at uh, uh, how to fill a titration table. But as usual, in any back titration, you will be given three reagents. So you are provided with one, two molar hydrochloric acid labeled as solution X. Number two, sodium hydroxide solution Y. And this sodium hydroxide solution Y contains 40 grams per liter of solution. Is it okay? Then we have number three, a metal carbonate, that is R carbonate, and this one is labeled as solid Z. And the mass of this solid Z is 4.69 grams. Is it okay? So thereafter, we have the procedure, then after the procedure, we are going to fill the table. Then we shall be able to answer some questions also. So allow me, my student, now to take you through the procedure. Is it okay? I'm going to take only five minutes. So procedure number one. So procedure number one. I'm going to take uh, solution X, which is. Uh, but before that, I need to take you through the reagents that I have with me. Uh, so I have sodium hydroxide solution labeled as solution Y. Then uh, two molar hydrochloric acid labeled as solution X. Then I have a solid here labeled as solid Z. This is now the R carbonate solution Z. Then I have Phenophthalein indicator, phenophthalein indicator with a dropper, and this one will be used dropwise. So, procedure number one, without wasting time, I have to take a measuring cylinder, 100 ml measuring cylinder, then I measure solution X, which is 2 molar hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to measure exactly 100 minutes. Is it okay, my student? Let us go. Let us go. So this is exactly 100 minutes of solution X. That is 2 molar hydrochloric acid. That is procedure number one. Procedure number two. I'm going to take a clean glass beaker, which is 250 minutes. Then I transfer this solution X into this beaker like this. Then procedure number three. Procedure number three. I take solid Z, which is the R, which is the, which is the R carbonate. Then I add to this solution X. And as I add, you make the observation. Is it okay? Let us go. This is a carbonate and an acid. You can see effervescence, production of gas bubble. 
So this being an acid and a carbonate, the gas bubbles are due to evolution of carbon dioxide. Is it okay? Thank you. So I have to add and wait until the effervescence or gas bubble stops, meaning the reaction has come to an end. And indeed, the reaction has stopped. Is it okay? So the procedure number four. I have now to label this solution. That is the resultant solution, R solution, R1. Is it okay? And I have already done so. Then this one becomes R1, the resultant solution between the reaction of the acid and the carbonate. Is it okay? Then the procedure number five. I take this solution, R1, then I fill the burette with it. Is it okay? So I transfer this one and fill the burette with R1, solution R1. Is it okay? Let us go. So I have a burette here with a stand, so I have to fill the burette. And uh, please focus and see that I have a funnel here, which I'm going to use to fill the burette. Focus very clearly. So I fill to the zero mark. Let us go. So that is uh, exactly 50 ml. I fill the burette to the zero mark and I'm able to read below the law in this case. Is it okay? Then thereafter, that's procedure number five. Then procedure number six. Procedure number six. I now take solution Y. Solution Y, which is sodium hydroxide solution. And remember, we said we have 40 grams of sodium hydroxide per liter of this solution. Is it okay? So what I do, I take this solution Y, I transfer it into clean beaker, then I pipette. This is what we call a pipette with a pipette filler. And as I said earlier on, Nowadays, we don't use our mouth to suck chemicals. We use our pipette filler for our healthy reasons. Is it okay? So let us go. I'm going to pipette solution Y, which is sodium hydroxide, the best using a pipette. And I'm taking 25 mils or centimeter cube. Is it okay? There we go. Then as I prepared this one, I'm going to transfer it into a clean conical flask. A clean conical flask. Okay, this is 25. Then I transfer this one into a clean conical flask, like that. And please, my student, this one requires patience and uh, total concentration, total concentration and patience. Very important when it comes to titration experiments. Is it okay? Good. So my student, procedure number seven, procedure number seven, I take phenolphthalein indicator using a dropper, like this. Then I add three drops to this sodium hydroxide solution, solution Y, and it is only 25 mils or centimeter cube. But initially look at the color of sodium hydroxide solution, solution Y, it is colorless. Let me see what happens when I add phenolphthalein indicator, three drops. Let us go. One, two, three. Three drops. The color changes from colorless to pink. Is it okay? So it means the color of an ophthalene indicator in a base is pink. We know that, isn't it? We know that. So the the next is procedure, which is now the final procedure, is now to titrate this pink solution against 
solution R1 in the burette. Is it okay? Then I have to titrate until this pink color turns colorless. Until the pink color turns colorless permanently. So as I titrate, I'll be swirling the solution in the conical flask like this until it turns colorless. Let us go. There I start. There I start. And as I as I titrate, I have to swirl. Turn. This is what we refer to as swirling. I have to swirl the mixture like this. So your concentration is on this uh, conical flask to see the color changes. To see the color changes. Good. The color has changed to colorless on the spot. Is it okay? And you have seen. You can now check and see. It is a clear solution, colorless solution. The pink color has turned colorless. Then, the next thing is now to read on the burette the volume of R1 that has been used. Is it okay? And when I look at it carefully, this is a uh, 20.0. It is exactly 20.0. So I have to record in the table. So please, let us fill the table together. Um, as you can see, we have the nutrition table. And filling this table will give you four marks. That is question A, you complete the table. So you have the final burette reading in centimeter cube, initial burette reading in centimeter cube. So the initial, I have started from, in the iteration number one, I have started from zero. So the initial reading was 0, 0.0. Is it okay? Then the final reading, it is 20.0. Is it okay? Then, uh, my student, uh, you can move on and cut out the second and third deiteration. But it is advisable that when you cut out the first one, you cut out the second one, the third one, uh, if you are very careful, you will see that the values are very close. And uh, this is for consistent reasons. Ensure that your values are consistent. Is it okay? And it's advisable also that make your values to be the same, to be uniform, so that you get the value for consistency. Is it okay when it comes to average? Is it okay, my student? So, if you cut out the second experiment, you will see that the values are very close. But also remember that when you cut out the second and third or fourth iteration, always refill the burette, refill the burette to the zero mark so that from time to time you are starting from the zero, from zero. Is it okay my student? So let us assume we are also starting from zero so that the final value will also be 20.0 then in the third iteration you also refill and start from 0, 0 0.0 then the final you will also get uh, 20. Point zero. Is it okay? Then thereafter, you have to subtract final red reading value. Then you subtract their initial red reading. Final minus initial. Then you get the volume of solution R1 used. Is it okay? So you take final minus initial, final minus initial, final minus initial. You get the volume of R1 used for the three iterations. Is it okay? So this one becomes 20.0, 20.0, then 20.0.
cytochemal CDT. Then after completing the table, we normally look at four important uh, areas. One, complete table. That one with only one mark. Then we have decimal place. That's another one mark. Then accuracy. Another one mark. Then principle of average. Another mark. See to open. So in total, you will end up having four marks. Four marks. See it okay, my student. Then, after, thereafter, you can now work out on question, the, the other questions below the table. But I advise on uh, decimal places. You can use one decimal place in the table or uh, two des one decimal place or two decimal places. But it's advisable that you use one decimal place. Is it okay? And ensure uh, you use one decimal place throughout. And if you use two decimal places, ensure it's also uniform. Is it okay, my student? So let us now move on and uh, look at some questions. And uh, let me tell you, my student, when it comes to calculations, that is now the most important area. If you can score marks on calculations, then you are sure of performing very well in a chemistry subject. Is it okay? Or a practical exam. So calculations are very important. So ensure you concentrate fully to the end and see how questions are very simple on nutrition. So let us go. Average volume. Average volume. You take the average of the three nutritions of this R1. Because the question says determine the average volume of solution R1 used. So this is R1. This is the R1. So this is, these are the volume of the three nutrients. So you add up the three, then you divide by three. See it okay? So let us go 20.0 plus 20.0 plus 20.0 then you divide by 3 you divide by 3 this one gives you 20.00 centimeter cube then I put there a tick it's also advisable that when you calculate the average volume this one is advisable use two decimal places because of the accuracy reasons if you use one decimal place, it means you are assured with the accurate value. But for your case, maybe you don't have the accurate value, then it's advisable to use two decimal places. Is it okay? Thank you. Then question C. Determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide solution Y used. Number of moles of Sodium hydroxide solution Y used. Remember this formula are uh, very important. Number of moles. Number of moles is equal to molarity times volume all over 1000. But let us focus up here where we have solution Y sodium hydroxide. They say that 40 grams is contained in one liter of solution. And one liter, we know very well, that is equivalent to one mole. Is it okay? So the molarity of sodium hydroxide solution Y is 1.0 molar. Is it okay, my student? So uh, in that case, our molarity M is 1 times volume. But we have, we pipetted solution Y, 25 centimeter cube, 25. So the volume of solution Y sodium hydroxide that has been used in this titration is 25 centimeter cube. So that's the volume. So you come and write here, 25 centimeter cube, divided by 1000. 
This a constant means volume per liter. So log 1000. So if you take your calculator and then uh, you move, you, you follow me close by and see uh, how we are going to get the value. So it is 1, 1 times 25, divided by, by 1000. That is uh, 0 0.025 months. Is it okay, my student? 0 0.025 months. Then I move on to the next question without wasting time. Let us uh, focus. Let us focus. And please ensure you focus, my student. So uh, let us focus on this one. Make sure you focus all through my student. So, uh, question D. Determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid solution R1. Hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid uh, solution R1 in a 100 centimeter cube of solution. In a 100 centimeter cube of solution. So here, you, as, as usual, you need to write the equation uh, between the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and uh, the acid in R1. Is it okay? So what you do, my student, to write the equation, uh, that is uh, sodium hydroxide solution Y reacting with HCR hydrochloric acid in solution R1. In solution R1. As you get a base to form a solvent water. So the name of the salt is called sodium chloride plus water. When you balance this equation, my student, hope you are well focused. Uh, when you balance the equation, you find that it is the equation is balanced. And therefore, the mole ratio between the sodium hydroxide and the acid is 1 to 1. Is it okay? So, mole ratio here, the mole ratio, mole ratio between the acid and the base, they are reacting at a ratio of 1 to 1. Is it okay? Then remember, uh, the moles of sodium hydroxide. Which, are, which react with the HCl are the same, are the same now. Is it okay? But if you look here, down here, you can focus here, my student, and see. You can focus slowly, slowly, just be slow and focus before you go back there. The number of moles of sodium hydroxide solution Y used, used to do what? The one used to react with the, with the acid. We have calculated is 0 0.025 moles. So these similar moles are the one that have now reacted with the acid because the mole ratio you can you can focus and see the mole ratio is is one to one. Is it okay? So we say that our moles let me subdivide this body into two so that I say our moles of Sodium hydroxide used is equal to moles of HCl in R1. Are you getting moles of HCl in R1? And what are these moles? So HCl is moles. So moles of HCl, moles of HCl is equal to the same zero point. 0 0.025 moles. 0 0.025 moles. Am I talking? Then, the question is asking us this way. Please check and see. Then determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid solution R1 in a hundred of 
solution, in a hundred of solution. So we want to calculate the one in a hundred. But from the burette, the average, the average volume. Just focus slowly. Just, just focus slowly and see. Uh, the volume of R1. Look at the burette. R1, the volume of R1 used. You add the 3 and divide by 3, which is 20.00 cm cube. So it means this 20 cm cube is the one which is of R1 is the one which is equivalent to 0 0.025 moles. Is it okay? So we work it out this way. Uh, we say if 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 20 centimeter cube is giving us 0 0.025 Months. Is it okay? What about 100? What about 100? What about 100 centimeter cube? So this is all about cross multiplication. Is it okay? So we, this one gives us uh, same as 0 0.025 divided by 20 times 100 Let me see if I calculate using my, cal my, my calculator as uh, uh, This one is equals to 0 0.1 25 months. That one is equivalent to uh, 0 0.125 months. Is it okay? Without wasting time, my student, let us attend to the next question. E, um, you have to calculate the number of months of hydrochloric acid in the 100 centimeter cube of the original solution x of the original solution x so from the original solution x from the original solution x in a hundred hundred so we have this formula our formula is usual say that number number of moles is equal to molarity that's capital M times volume over 1,000, isn't it? That's the formula. Then, in the original solution X, in the original solution X, what's the molarity? Let us go back to our procedure. Focus slowly, my student. Focus slowly with me. Uh, we talked of solution X is hydrochloric acid. And the, the molarity is very clear. It is more so the original solution the molarity is two more is it okay so let us move slowly and focus so we say that uh, two so the molarity is two then times volume volume of the in the original 100 remember i measured in a in, in a measuring cylinder if you can go back and see i measured 100 so the volume was 100 so i multiply by 100 then divide by the constant, which is 1,000 volume in, in one liter. So I divide by 1,000. This one gives me, if I calculate, uh, that is 2 times 100 uh, divided by 1,000, that is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 months. That is. 0 0.2 months. Is it okay, my student? Without wasting time, let us move on to part F. Calculate the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid solution X that reacted with solid Z. Solid Z, remember, is R carbonate. Are you getting it? So how do we go about this? Very simple. You take the 
number of moles from the original solution x at 100 then you minus the number of moles at at uh, 100 at 100 of r1 of r1 the one which r1 is the one which reacted with the with the acid you get it so you subtract you subtract the moles of the acid at a 100 in the original minus the moles at a 100 at R1, the one which reacted with the carbonate. So if you get the difference, you get the moles. So this is it. So you take um, moles at 100 in the original solution. So you take the top of moles in original. In original solution, let me talk of original solution minus moles at hundred centimeter cube of R1. Is it okay? Then this one becomes zero point two. Minus at a hundred, we have found out R one at a hundred is zero point zero point uh, one two five. This one gives us what? Let me see. Let me see the calculation. Zero point one two five. This one gives us zero point Zero seven five months. So I have to put there a tick. So my student, this means these are the months of hydrochloric acid in solution X that reacted with the carbonate at the beginning of the experiment. Are you getting it? Good. Then we move on to last question G. Uh, the relative formula mass of the carbonate the relative formula mass of the carbonate so for us to calculate the RFM or the relative formula mass of the carbonate first of all we need to know the, 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 the number of moles of the carbonate that reacted with the acid the number of moles of the carbonate that reacted with the acid so we write first the equation. Is it okay? The reaction, the chemical equation between the carbon and the acid. Let us go. Uh, so this one, this one becomes R carbonate solid reacting with the HCl acid as usual to form a salt which is uh, R R chloride. Remember, this means R has a valence or combining power of two in this formula. This chemical formula. Then plus carbon four oxide plus water. So when we balance this equation, you find that. The moles of the acid are two. You can confirm. The moles of the acid are two. The moles of the acid are two. So the mole ratio, so the mole ratio between the carbonate and the acid is one to one. Mole ratio is not one to one, but one to two. Sorry, one to two. The mole ratio is one to two. One carbonate, two moles of the acid. Then the moles of the acid that reacted with the carbonate, this ratio two. The moles of the acid that reacted with the carbonate, we have subtracted and found it is 0 0.075 moles. Is it okay? So we ask ourselves like this: if ratio two is giving us 0 
moles. What about ratio 1? This is ratio 1 of the carbonate. Is it okay? So it's all about cross multiplication. So this one becomes uh, this one becomes 0 0.075 uh, 75 divided by 2 times 1. This one gives us um, divided by divided by 2. This one gives us 0 0.0375 moles. So my student, these are the moles of the carbonate that now reacted with the acid. Is it okay? Then the next step now we can create the relative formula mass of the carbonate, R carbonate. Is it okay? From our formula, you know very well that I hope you are focusing, uh, my student. Relative formula mass is equal to mass divided by number of moles divided by number of number of moles. What's the mass? I'll take you back for one minute. Focus slowly. Don't be in a hurry, my student. You focus slowly. Uh, here is the R carbonate. The mass is given in bracket there from the procedure 4.69. So the mass, you focus slowly, please. Uh, 4.69 divided by the number of moles we have calculated 0. 0375 0 0.0375 This one gives us um let me see four that is four four point six nine divided by the moles it is one twenty five 125 125 grams per mole. Is it okay? But now we want now to calculate. Look, my student, the last bit, the last bit to determine the relative atomic mass of the metal carbonate. Is it okay? So what we do, my student, just focus and see. What we do, my student. When you take R carbonate, its RFM is 125. Is it okay? So, if you take R plus 12 for carbon plus 48 for oxygen, you get 125. Is it okay? This is R plus CDST is equal to 125. So R is equal to 125 minus CDST. R is equal to, um, let me see, 125 minus CDST, 65. Okay, 65. So the So the relative atomic mass of R is 65 grams. My student, you can see. Is it okay? So my student, let no one cheat you that the iteration, back to iteration is difficult. It is very simple. Just know that the one reagent, especially the acid, is always in the excess. So in this case, the acid has reacted with the carbonate and the acid was also reacted with the base. Is it okay, my student? Thank you. Thank you.